Shalom. We are continuing with the Gospel according to John. We have been discussing the Hebraic background of the book. We are passing over chapter 14 as there's not a lot of commentary to be had. You can read that on your own. Today we will cover chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now Israel has been considered a vine in many places. Psalm 80, verse 8 through 16. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the heathen and planted it. You prepared room before it and did cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why have you then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? The boar out of the wood wastes it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine, and the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Also in Isaiah 5, 1-7, through 7, Now while I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard, my well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you, and what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of Jehovah of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. There are given some interpretations in the Talmud. Speaking of the three branches of the chief butler's dream in Genesis 40, several interpretations of them are given. Rav Chia ben Abba says that Rav says, these three branches refer to the three proud princes, explaining how the Hebrew sounds like the word for three proud princes, who emerge from the Jewish people in each and every generation. Rabbi Yehoshua said, rather the verse should be interpreted as follows, vine, this is a reference to the Torah, three branches, these are Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, and as it was budding, its blossoms shot forth. These are the members of the Sanhedrin and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. These are the righteous people who live in each and every generation. From Hulin 92. So the people being the vine and producing good fruit, this is a common metaphor. Now this is interesting in Leviticus 19.23. And when you shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. The interesting thing is that Yeshua has been with his disciples for three years. Continuing in verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, 
and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth I do not call you servants, for the servant does not know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. We remember that Abraham is a friend of God. In Second Chronicles 20, verse 7, Are you not our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever? Isaiah 41, 8, But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. And we see God is going to tell Abraham what he's going to do in Sodom because he is his friend. As Yeshua said, you're my friend. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Genesis 18:17. And Yehovah said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Also, it was customary in Yeshua's day for the student to choose the rabbi. And so he's making a distinction for that. Joshua ben Perechiah used to say, Appoint for thyself a teacher, and acquire for thyself a companion, and judge all men with the scale weighted in his favor. From the Talmud Pirkei Avot. Continuing in verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they do not know him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which, which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this comes to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. There is a history of this hatred documented in the shadow picture of Joseph, Genesis 37, 4 through 5. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him, did not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Psalm 69, 4, verse which Yeshua is quoting here, They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Also Psalm 35, 19, let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without cause. Continuing in verse 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me, and you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. This word comforter in Greek is parakletos, parakletos, and it a translation Hebrew from the verb nacham. The word parakletos appears in the Septuagint in the book of Job 16.2. I have heard many such things, miserable comforters are you all. The parakletos are translated by this phrase menachamim. It's in a different form here, but it is from the word nacham. In Isaiah 51.12, we see, I, even I, am he that comforts you, from this verb, nacham. Who are you, that you should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man, which shall be made as grass? Yehovah is calling himself the comforter. This leads to a discussion in the Talmud of the name of the Messiah. And some say that Menachem ben Chizkiah is his name, as it is stated, 
because a comforter, Menachem, that should relieve my soul is far from me. Commentary on verse Lamentations 116. Rabbi Yudan said, Menachem is his name, as it is stated, for a comforter, Menachem, has grown distant from me. Commentary on the same verse. Rabbi Hanina said, and they do not disagree. With the numerical value of this, the numerical value of that, Menachem equals Tzemach. Tzemach is the brand. He said to him, his name is Menachem. What is his father's name? He said to him, Hezekiah, as stated above Chizkiah. He said to him, where do they live? He said to him, Virat Arba, that is in Bethlehem of Judah. Commentary also on Lamentations. Now there is no character in the Bible named Menachem ben Chizkiah. There is a Menachem who is one of the king of the northern kingdom, but his father's name is Gadi. So they're not talking about that guy. They're talking about some future Messiah that they expect, and his name will be Menachem ben Chizkiah. The concept of the the Comforter, the Parakletos, is first mentioned in John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. It's mentioned in chapter 15, which we have already read. It's referred to in John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. It is interesting that this Holy Spirit, the Parakletos, the Spirit of Truth, never speaks of himself. And there are two interesting examples in the Old Testament. In Genesis 24, even though we know that the steward of Abraham's house, who goes to fetch the bride for Isaac, we know his name is Eliezer, but his name is never mentioned in that chapter. In Ruth 2, verses 5 and 6, the head of the reapers is also unnamed, and he is the one that introduces Boaz's bride, Ruth, to Boaz. So the Holy Spirit is the one that anonymously brings the bride to the groom. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim, Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.